When Vice President and Chief of Police Marlon Lynch joined his alma mater in February of 2021, MSU expanded the role of police chief in recognition of the broadening nature of proactive safety planning needs across the university beyond traditional law enforcement efforts. To strengthen and bolster these efforts going forward, Interim President Woodruff has changed the structure of police and public safety's leadership to enable the accelerated expansion of university safety efforts across the East Lansing campus and all MSU campuses throughout Michigan. Chris Rosman is the new chief of police, and Vice President Lynch is now vice president and chief safety officer for Michigan State University. Why this change now, and how will we see it play out? What will you be doing more of and less of now? Yes, thanks, Russ. And, um... As usual, thanks for the opportunity to have this discussion. We definitely appreciate the uh, the partnership with you and uh, allowing us to have a, a continuous and consistent opportunity to have these discussions with our community. My role as vice president and chief safety officer will be more broad as opposed to having also primary responsibility for the university police department. As you well know, the the university evolves, needs evolve, These were discussions that were had shortly after my arrival, uh, almost two years ago now, this month makes two years, in speaking with Dr. Stanley in regards to the the path of the university at the time. Uh, We knew that there was going to be significant growth within uh, MSU Health, the campuses in Grand Rapids and Flint and soon to be Detroit, and also the overall need for the community with not just police, police is going to be and remain a significant component, but the public safety components of what we do, uh, specifically uh, the use of security technology, um, the implementation of engagement opportunities to have the component of having someone with a police and public safety background and experience that is at the executive leadership level within the university but also recognizing that the day-to-day operations of the police department are they exactly that, day-to-day. The timing appeared right with the acceleration of um, initiatives that were scheduled to be part of a, a three-year strategic plan. Uh, they move forward, right? And so that's what has occurred. We are fortunate enough to uh, have uh, leadership internally to where we can make an appointment for someone to lead the police department. At the same time, more of what I will be doing will be all things MSU, not just in East Lansing, but Grand Rapids, Flint, and Detroit, and anywhere else we decide to go, where there is a, uh, a need for safety and security. And I, I think the reality of it is uh, that's a full-time, that's not part-time. That makes so much sense when you explain it. I didn't even think about Grand Rapids and Flint and our growing partnership with Henry Ford and whatnot. That that makes so much sense. And like you said, how great that you had Chief Rosman now, we can call him, in the fold. But, uh, Chris, congratulations on the promotion. And just sort of remind us how long have you been with the department and how your career path has evolved into chief now. Yeah, thank you, Russ. Appreciate the kind words. Um, I, you know, First of all, I'm, I'm, I'm honored and, and humbled to, to be offered the appointment for uh, chief here at my alma mater and uh, the place that I've spent my entire career. So I'll, I'll start with that. But I have been on campus for over 25 years. Uh, I started as a student back in 1997 and uh, actually started working for the MSU Department of Police and Public Safety in 1998 as a student employee. So when I graduated in 2001, was fortunate to be offered the opportunity to uh, go through the police academy and start my career here at MSU. Uh, where I've been for um, over 22 years. So definitely, uh, you know, so interesting to come full circle and to, you know, be able on a daily basis to stop up to the, the cadet desk where I kind of started my uh, my career and, and give the students that we have working for us now some advice as they uh, start their careers. So it's, it's, uh, it's such, such a cool experience. I, I've had so many opportunities at uh, this department over the years, from handling a, a canine for several years to being a, a road patrol supervisor, sergeant lieutenant, helping to start our special victims unit, uh, working on our investigative side of the house as a, a supervisor. 
So it's, you know, the, the experiences have just been uh, incredible over the years. And I'm, I'm so honored to, to uh, be here and be in this position. And Chris, share a little bit of your vision on, you know, everyone, you'll take some things that Marlon did and build on them. Everyone puts their imprint on things, but share sort of your vision and of the evolving mission, say, of, of the MSU police. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, like like the VP said, it allows me to be in a position to, to be that day-to-day kind of boots-on-the-ground leader that our officers and our people that work hard every day, um, they want to see that. And, you know, they, they, they want to see somebody kind of standing by their side and, and, and leading by example. And it gives me the opportunity to, to do that. I have a couple priorities that align with our department strategic plan and even the university strategic plan, but I'd like to see you know, we do a, a really good job of, of community outreach, community engagement, community policing as it is, and I'd like to really make sure that we weave that through all of our employees and every aspect of our department. Our police officers do a great job on a daily basis, but to, to, to really, you know, emphasize in the, the point that every interaction that we have with every member of our community, whether it's student, faculty, staff, visitors, uh, that's an opportunity to engage, to build trust, um, and, and to really emphasize that, that community policing at all levels, um, not just specific folks that focus on that. Um, that's the one thing. Uh, the, the other things I'm, I'm looking at are increasing our use of data-driven policing, um, looking at statistics and intelligence and metrics to properly address the crime that we do have, but also to deploy our resources in a, in a proper manner. And that's something that we could uh, we do a good job of right now. But we could definitely um, we could definitely increase and look at that from some different angles, especially as we introduce different services at our, at our department, different uses of technology to really combine those with our entire operation. And then um, you know, third and the one thing I've said from the very beginning is I want to support, support our people. Um, our people have been through a lot, uh, especially the last couple months. And, you know, I, I, I want to support them. I want to stand with them. I want to uh, lead from the front. I want to lead by example. And I want to focus on the overall wellness of our organization um, or our organizational culture and move forward and uh, continue to move forward in a positive direction. That's great. And, and Marlon, say some more about why you feel so comfortable passing the torch to Chris, who's too humble, I think, sometimes to <laughs> talk about how good he is at his job. Well, I think what you just heard from him, right? And and it's it's uh, it's legitimate, it's sincere, and it's uh, a lived experience as well. There has been turnover within police and public safety uh, within the last, I don't know, three to four years, just due to natural attrition of a retirement then unfortunately, the person that was selected had um, just a, a medical condition that did not allow that to continue with her. Then there was an interim role and then me all within, what, three, four short, years? Short, yeah. time, yeah. short time frame. And so at some point, there has to be stability, right? And after being stable for a very long time, going through that amount of change in a short amount of time can have various levels of impact. I agree with Chris. Our, our staff has been through a lot to know that there is uh, leadership that is familiar, but also that is more than able to do the job, uh, being placed in an environment to where our working relationship is strong uh, as well. There's a level of familiarity with it. He will, being consistent with what is in place for a strategic plan, but it's important that as the police chief that he has the opportunity to prioritize um, some things as well, but they're consistent. Right. And so the comfort level is there with that to allow that to actually happen. And uh, I think the timing was right for it. I think it was all appropriate. So there's definitely confidence that this will be a, a very good thing. Can I ask you both just as you reflect on the violence from February 13th, just and it probably changes and evolves. But I think those joining in on our conversation would just like to know what you're reflecting on. I'm not an emotional person. I have found myself being very emotional since then. Um, And it's something to deal with from a personal perspective as well as professional. And I think being cognizant of that um, is is necessary for us to move forward. We we do have jobs to do, and that's not going to go away, and we will do that. But at the same time, uh, being very aware, very aware of that. So the reflection for me is, There are formal processes to help us determine what went well, what we need to improve on, what we need to do differently. Technology, personnel, deployments, all of that 
will be through those formal processes. But what I think is just as important is recognizing that things are going to be different just from the violence itself. It's going to be different. I have a um, a friend, actually, we went to school here as undergrads together, and um, she was impacted by Sandy Hook, her and her family. And she reached out afterwards to say, it's just not going to be the same. It's not a bad thing. It's not a necessarily a good thing, but it's just going to be different. And understanding that that is where we're going to be is important as we move forward. I I went through the Reflect and Connect session that our human resources Mm -hmm. uh, offered, which I thought was tremendous. And one of the things that I think it was Lisa said that let yourself be sad. Mm -hmm. Let let those feelings wash through you. Don't try to quash those. I found that very, because like you, I was just so profoundly sad at Mm -hmm. first was the feeling. And, but I think it's important, like you said, to let yourself feel those things. And, And Chris, what, just what are you thinking? Yeah, it's so hard to, to kind of put it into I'm words, sure. it's the reflection. You know, there's such a, a range of emotion, but I think what really stands out is that our department and most of our employees that have been here for a long time are, are truly connected to this community. So we are impacted and we are healing just as our community is. But during the, you know, the incident itself, you know, this is something that, that we've, we train for and we, we do a very good job training for, and we've been training for, for several years, not just with our department, but with our local and regional partners in a very coordinated effort. And it's something that we feel that we're, we're very well prepared for from a response perspective, but we never thought it would actually happen here. Um, We always train like things are going to happen, but it's in the back of your mind, you, you you know, you, you, you hope and you think that it's it's not going to happen here. But with that being said, we were we were very well prepared, and I couldn't you know be more proud of our officers and our employees and our first responders that went towards the threat with the you know with uh, following their training um, to 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 stop the killing and to to render aid and to save lives. And sometimes that's hard to talk about, and uh, that's what our people did that night. Not just our MSU police officers, but our our local and regional partners that that came to help us as well. So, I, I would you know be remiss if I didn't start by acknowledging the the work that went on behind the scenes from our employees that were you know did, did some things that night that were um, very heroic. And it's hard to say that in uh, in light of such a, um, a a tragic event. Personally, you know that there's been a range of emotion as well, and I think especially as we were uh, committed to, to communicating updates and sharing information with our community, you know, it's worth saying that when we were doing that, we weren't, we weren't talking to the media. We weren't talking to the, the cameras. We were speaking to our community. And I know personally, when I was providing updates, you know, I was, I, I knew at that point that we had students that were, you know, barricaded in rooms and fearing for their life. And that that's who I was talking to. And so sometimes you can kind of put some, Talking points down and everything, but uh, sometimes it's better just to speak with with emotion and to uh, to share that level of compassion. And during the event, that's definitely uh, what we did, you know. And we did our best to to provide as much support and information to to our community as we could. You did it very well. And I guess just Chief Rosman, I'll stay with you as we sort of wrap up. What do you want Spartan Nation to know about you and, and MSU police as you sort of take the reins? Yeah, definitely. It's a great question. Um, we, we are part of the community. We are, you know, Spartans protecting Spartans, if you will. And uh, and that's how we're going to move forward. Um, this is our campus. What struck me, I'll, I'll share one quick story, is the Wednesday after the violence that we experienced on the 13th, we had the vigil at the Rock and it was just overwhelming oh. how many people oh. showed up you know, probably 10,000, in excess of 10,000 people. And the, what surprised me was the number of students, well, no, number one, the number of students that came up and gave us hugs, because I think we gave a, a couple hundred hugs that night. But the number of students that told us that they still felt safe on campus, and here we're standing two blocks from um, one of the locations, and they said, we still feel safe on campus. Um, and that struck me, because I didn't think that was the, the perception. And, and I've heard that over and over again, that students, that our community is appreciative, 
Um, and with that being said, we are uh, committed to, to absolutely ensuring the safety of this campus in every possible way, and that is boots on the ground, police and public safety, that is technology behind the scenes, that is advancing initiatives that you can see and things that you can't see. And so we are committed to that. Uh, we are absolutely uh, committed to ensuring the safety of this campus now and in the future, and we know that we need to work with the community to do that, and we stand ready. Wow, you know, there couldn't have been anything you would rather have heard, yes. And, and yeah, Vice yeah. President Lynch, yeah. same thoughts. Well, no, I mean, I was just just yeah. listening listening to the chief and his comments with that is that, you know, the commitment of the officers and everyone that responded that night, it's there. A large percentage of our staff are also Spartans. They've lived here That's and right. gone to school here as well. And those that did not, they've worked here to the extent mm-hmm. of that yeah. level that they are as well. But what struck me that night is that the chief – for the city of East Lansing, the chief for Lansing, the chief from Meridian Township, the sheriff of Ingham County are all Spartans here as well. They went to school here. And so the connectivity of the law enforcement community as well as just public safety community, including fire and, and EMS as well, mm-hmm. it's it's more than the norm. I'm not saying that, you know, that that's, that's not in place anywhere else, but it just, it really is, and that commitment is there for that. So I think that uh, this was um, an unfortunate situation to deal with, for sure. I think that it provides opportunities to continue to evolve and partner with the community, but uh, to do some things that, you know, may not have uh, been available uh, to move forward with. And so... Being able to do that and do it in partnership with our community and hear their feedback and with our local and regional uh, police and public safety is important with that. So I, w- I would echo Chief Rosman's comments in regards to where our community feels like that. And we also recognize that there are those that are not at that comfort level. Mm-hmm. And part of what we will do is to work with them to get them at that space. You're here. And, and as I asked Chris Marlin, as you sort of take on your new and expanded roles, what would you like us to know? Just that, again, that we have uh, full confidence in Chief Rosman and his ability. The way that we are organized, not just within police and public safety, but, but as a university, is also to build capacity and to create opportunities. And so to navigate things together and recognize that we have to have the voice of our community in play as we make these decisions to impact our culture. That's Marlon Lynch, Vice President and Chief Safety Officer for MSU, and Chief of Police Chris Rosman. There's much more at police.msu.edu, and I'm Russ White for MSU.